Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we have looked at how you can create your Kubernetes cluster on EKS. So we looked at uh, creating your control plane, then adding your uh, data plane, which is your worker nodes. And then we also looked at some of your add-ons like your core DNS, uh, VPC, EN, uh, CNI, and the queue proxy. And then we also looked at how you can interact with this cluster. So there are a few important prerequisites that you will need to keep in mind. So one is your uh, AWS CLI and the other is your kubectl. So kubectl is what we use to interact with the cluster. Uh, there are two more important things that uh, we will need to keep in mind. One is we will need to update your security group. Uh, you will need to allow 443. And the other thing is updating your uh, access. So here, if you go to this access tab, so as of now, these are the three IAM entities that can access your cluster. So in my case, I created this cluster using the root user. So I can interact with this cluster using this root user account. But if you have any other IAM user or any other IAM role with which you're trying to access this cluster, it will not work. You will need to explicitly add that IAM user or the role here. You will need to give the necessary access. Only then you will be able to interact with the cluster. Now, in this session, we will look at how you can upgrade this cluster. So, you know, how you can move it to uh, one version above to whatever currently we are running. So, Kubernetes is a fast moving project and the open source upstream Kubernetes that EKS runs is updated very regularly. In fact, there are minor versions which are released approximately three times in a year. So, a Kubernetes version is supported for 14 months after being first available on EKS. And EKS is committed to uh, give you 60 days notice before the end of support date. Even so, uh, it is recommended updating your Kubernetes cluster as soon as possible, right? So, uh, whatever, so in my case, I'm running version 1.3.0. So, uh, EKS will support this for the next 14 months, right? So, in this case here, you can see, uh, so um, uh, this will air, reach the end of standard support in July of this year. So basically this was released, um, you know, uh, 14 months or, you know, basically once this is released, you have 14 months to use this version and you get a 60 days of notice period telling, Hey, you need to upgrade your cluster. But the recommendation is as soon as you get a release version, upgrade your Kubernetes. Now these Kub new Kubernetes version sometimes uh, introduce significant change. Therefore, it is recommended that you test the behavior of your applications against a new Kubernetes version before you update your Q uh, production cluster. So basically test out the newer version, uh, test your applications and see if there is any change in the performance or in the behavior of, of your application before you upgrade your production clusters. Now you can do this by building a continuous integration workflow to test your application behavior before moving to any new Kubernetes version. It is also recommended to review the change log to see you know, what, what all is um, uh, introduced as well as some considerations that you, that you need to take into account for the upgrade. Once you have done all that, uh, we can assume that you know we will be happy with the new version and we want to go ahead and upgrade your cluster. Now, as you can see here, the cluster that I have created here, this is running on 1.3.0. But there's actually a newer version available, which is um, uh, 1.3.1. And we also have 1.3.2. Uh, but um, uh, in my case, I've, I've created 1.3.0. Sorry, 1.30. And we will be upgrading this to 1.31. Now, here, as I said, you can see on the console that there's a new version of Kubernetes is available for this cluster. And we can go ahead and click this upgrade button. So let's click on this and you can choose your version. So you can see we also have the 1.32. But if you want to go to version 1.32, you'll need to first upgrade it to 1.31. So let's click on this. And you know, this will start the upgrade process. All right, so you can see here cluster version upgrade is in progress. And if I refresh this, my upgrade should be in progress. Now this will take several minutes. So I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna wait for this to complete and then you know we will continue from there. Okay, so it took about six to seven minutes for the upgrade to ha happen. I clicked the refresh button. I can see, you can see here the status, it says active. And this means that my um, 
uh, Kubernetes version has been uh, upgraded. So essentially in this, the control plane. Now all of this happened behind the scenes. And uh, when, when the upgrade was happening, it is actually the control plane upgrade that happens. And this happens in a highly available manner using rolling updates so that my control plane remains available and my cluster can continue working and operating as normal during the upgrade process. Now, like I said, this is only the control plane that has been upgraded in this case. Now, my worker nodes are still left alone, right? So we will upgrade those after the uh, control plane has finished the upgrade. So if, if you look at this node groups, you can see here, it says update now because my control plane is running on version 1.31 and my node group is still on 1.30. Now, because of the way this upgrade happens, Kubernetes is designed uh, so that your node group is allowed to be one version behind your control plane. So it's not necessary that you have to upgrade this because your EKS is designed in such a way that your node groups can be one version behind your control plane. But again, from the recommendation perspective, it is always recommended that your control plane and your worker nodes uh, should be on the same uh, version. So with this in mind, you can update your control plane first and then you can bring the nodes up to date in line with the control plane within your node group. So in this case here, we'll just go and click on this update now and we can choose your uh, strategy. So you can choose between your uh, rolling update and uh, force update. Rolling update will simply gracefully drain your nodes and it will update few nodes at a time and it will update based on various settings that we have configured to make sure that the workload is not impacted. If you're running your pods and the various components, if you're running, those are not impacted. And I don't have any downtime during our upgrade, the overall upgrade. Now, on the other hand, the force update will just restart all the nodes within the cluster. So we are forcefully upgrading the uh, node group. So it will forcefully stop all the nodes and you know do the upgrade. So I can do this if it's not a production cluster or if you don't mind having a bit of a downtime when you're upgrading your uh, node groups. Now in our case, we will go with the uh, rolling update and we will click on this update button and then the node group version update will start and this will be in progress. So you can see here it is uh, updating. So as part of this update process, you, you will be able to see nodes and some of the nodes will appear and disappear as they are being updated. So let's try refreshing this. So at this point, I still have uh, two nodes running. So let's go to our uh, EC2. So ideally what will happen is since we are talking about a rolling update, um, AWS EKS will basically launch. So you can see here, I have four instances. So as part of my upgrade, so these two instances, uh, these are my new instances where the uh, uh, worker nodes will be updated and these two instances will be shut down gracefully. So, you know, as part of your upgrade process, you will see some nodes uh, uh, coming and going as part of this upgrade. So don't worry about it. Once the upgrade is done, you should be able to see uh, only two uh, uh, nodes because we have defined uh, that I want only two instances as part of my node groups. So you can see here as well, so two are not ready. So these two are the old instances, which is running 1.30. Uh, and these are the two instances where we are upgrading it to version 1.31. So again, this will take some time. So I'm gonna wait here. And uh, once it's ready, uh, we will continue from there. Okay, so it took about 15 minutes for the node groups to be updated and you can see here now this is on version 1.31 same as my control plane. So now my control plane and the uh, node groups are aligning and you know during this upgrade you might see this uh, nodes over here coming and going. So it's all part of your upgrade so don't worry about it. Uh, at the end of the update whatever the number you have specified you'll have that many number of uh, instances and this is a rolling update that happens. So uh, we have updated our uh, control plane and then we have updated our uh, node group as well. Now the only thing left is to update the add-on. So you can see here the add-ons. This also shows a number that means we need to update our uh, add-on as well. So on, when we created our cluster, we configured uh, all these add-ons. So we have the node monitoring agent, QProxy, uh, Amazon VPC, CNI, core DNS and the EKS pod uh, identity agent. So these are add-ons that uh, work within the cluster to do various things like your service discovery, service networking, pod networking. 
and these add-ons needs to be upgraded to the latest version of your kubernetes as well so you know basically here also you can see different different versions you will need to upgrade um, uh, these as well and here you can see so it's it's not showing the upgrade for node monitoring agent and for the pod identity it's mainly for the queue proxy uh, vpc cni and the core dns and uh, for us to upgrade this you can just click on this update version and you can choose the version over here so currently it is running on this so what we will do is so here you know this is the uh, uh, 1.31 version that we have so you can choose any one in this i'm going to choose the uh, default one which is 1.31.2 and we will save this change so this will start the upgrade for us likewise we will do the same thing for the other two add-ons as well so again upgrade upgrade the version and we will choose uh, so let's go with the latest one so we'll save this change and then we will do the same thing for the last one which is the core dns so again we will upgrade this to the uh, default one so which is basically the recommended one so this is going to be the uh, add-ons uh, up upgrade so you can see my Q proxy is updating, Amazon VPC CNI is upgrading and my core DNS is also updating. So again, this will take some time. So you'll need to have some patience with this. The control plane takes about um, eight minutes. The node groups takes about 15 minutes and then the, the add-ons will also take some time for um, uh, the uh, upgrade to uh, happen. So once this update is uh, done very soon, my entire cluster would be updated to version 1.31 which is the recommended one that is what we have done and like i said before in this case we are following the rolling update so um, you know we should not really have any downtime with the uh, cluster so you know uh, eks will uh, take care of that and this is the recommended approach but again if you want to do a force update you can do that as well but please keep in mind that's going to have some downtime with your cluster and your application accessibility will be impacted so i'm going to wait for this and uh, you know I'll, I'll give it some time for the update to complete okay so now you can see here my add-ons are also updated so my core dns is done the vpc cni is done and also the uh, uh, q proxy is done and this completes my um, EKS uh, cluster upgradation. So my now my cluster, everything, so my control plane, my node groups, my add-ons, everything is running on my Kubernetes version 1.31. So that's basically how you can upgrade your uh, uh, EKS cluster. It is time consuming, but uh, you know this is something that is definitely recommended. Uh, to do if you're looking you know, for um, more features enhancements and everything and again the recommendation is to test it out uh, before you start doing the upgrade in your production cluster and that is mainly to uh, you know look at the behavior of your application the performance of your application and everything just to make sure everything is working as expected that's all i have for this session if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up Please subscribe to the channel for more content and share the video with your network. If you have any feedback or any queries, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.